What's up guys, you're about to see an interview with Randy Huck of Huck Products. I know a lot of you guys already know who he is, maybe some of you guys don't know who he is, but he owns and operates a company out here in the United States where he makes replacement parts for Total Gym models and other sliding bench trainers. Randy was gracious enough to send me some replacement wheels for my Fit and also my Apex G1 about over a month ago, so I've been using those for a while now. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. He also sent me some replacement cables, which I have not used those. Uh, and also his uh, version of like the chrome handle, which is actually a stainless steel handle, which I also like. And so this interview has been a long process in the making. We've been talking over email, had a couple long conversations over the phone as well. But to be clear, I have no financial ties with Randy or his company. I purely wanted to do this video to give you guys more resources to keep your sliding bench trainer going on for really as long as you want, or maybe if you guys want to use it to kind of refurbish an old one. And also to kind of go without saying, we both have nothing but good things to say about Total Gym and or any other uh, sliding bench training company that Randy makes parts for. These are just things, and again, resources that kind of help maximize these already great machines. We're going to get into a lot of things, but specifically, there's also a lot of great uh, safety information that I honestly wasn't aware of or wasn't really taking too seriously. So definitely kind of listen to the end, ask me any questions, definitely email Randy if you think any of his products might help you out, if you guys have any questions and or concerns. I know this is kind of a long video and I was debating about kind of chopping this up into different pieces or other videos, but I put timestamps down below and kind of segmented out different areas that we're kind of talking about if you guys do want to jump ahead to a certain section. And I do ask if you guys find this video helpful, please consider liking, sharing this content, uh, and subscribing if you already have not. Briefly, before we jump into the interview, I just want to say a couple of comments about using the wheels. Like I said, I've been using them now for at least three to possibly four weeks uh, since I put them on my Fit and G1 models. Uh, you can, uh, to the untrained eye, they definitely look stronger. I don't know too much about, you know, engineering and stuff like that. You can see my fit wheels kind of got worn in a little bit. Again, I don't know how much of that is wear and tear, how much this is a big deal. Um, I definitely stress these things heavily. I stress my machines heavily. A lot of you guys have commented on past videos and actually recommended I check out Randy's wheels because they are so strong and durable that, especially if you're someone like me putting a lot of heavy weight on, you're going to want to upgrade to these wheels. And I think Randy has told me that, uh, in, in, if not in the interview, he's told me uh, off interview as well. So in kind of closer inspection, they definitely seem like they're kind of more durable, more heavy duty made wheels. At least that's just to me. Once you put the wheels on the glide board, as far as just talking about the fits concerned, uh, they definitely have a different, more of a slicker kind of glide to it that, um, you know, I kind of like the traditional glide of the fit. It kind of has a little bit more friction to it. I've said that before, before in past videos. Honestly, after a day or two using it though, it's very minor. I didn't really notice too much. So you'll get used to it one or the other. The point is the glide is going to be a little bit different. Um, overall, like, all I can say is I've been using the fit wheels. They, they work perfectly. I'm pretty confident they're going to last that longer. So I actually feel good, at least from a safety standpoint, like we'll get into this video, that I'm kind of happy I did upgrade this, especially on my fit model. But what really stood out is when I replaced my Apex G1 wheels with Randy's wheels. Uh, this is something a lot of you guys even commented on past videos. Uh, that some people kind of already know about, but if you have an Apex G1, G3, G5 model, you notice those wheels are kind of like, I don't know if they're like a plastic or what, but even some of the Amazon reviews, people have said that the wheels kind of wear out really fast. I definitely use my G1, don't put it through heavy use, but I even commented on that first review video that they kind of make this really loud noise. It's more of an aggressive, definitely more of an aggressive type of ride. Definitely no probably the noisiest of all the total gyms, but when you put Randy's wheels on, it's totally different. I mean, the, the ride is so different, a lot more smooth, much more smoother, I should say. Uh, definitely not as loud either. So I would say if you have an Apex model, definitely I would consider upgrading to Randy's wheels to just increase the performance and reduce the noise. It also just makes for a much more comfortable ride. So I could probably say a little bit more as far as my comments on uh, using Randy's products. I think they're awesome so far. I think they're going to hold up, so I'm pretty confident in that. Uh, but if you guys have any questions about these wheels and my personal use using them, definitely feel free to drop a comment down below or email me. I'm happy to get back to you. Otherwise, let's jump to the interview. All right, Randy, how you doing? Fine. How about you? Good. Doing really good. Graciously uh, allowing his presence to be with us here today. He's obviously a big fan of Total Gym. I, I said at the start of this that... Um, we're both supporters of Total Gym. We both obviously really like their products. Randy just happened to even go a step further and even just improving upon, I shouldn't say improving upon, but just allowing people to kind of even maybe take a product that maybe is maybe uh, you're thinking about throwing away or maybe refurbishing. And now he's created a great product that'll essentially link your Total Gym and your sliding bench trainer since it lasts a lot longer. So um, Randy, you just got, I guess, what made you kind of start the company? And maybe you want to tell us a little bit about the company as well. Okay. Well, it, it's a small company. I do most everything. Lately, for the last couple of years, my son Chris has been helping. Um, but anyway, uh, the way it started was kind of interesting. I'll give you a shorter version. The longer version is actually on the website on the homepage. 
but uh, my wife, uh, we got five, uh, six kids, and our youngest liked to nurse in the middle of the night. So my wife watched infomercials, and she saw the Total Gym infomercial about maybe 10,000 times, and that may be an exaggeration. But she wanted one so badly she could almost taste it. But her birthday was already passed, and mine was coming up. So she said, hey, hon, how would you like a Total Gym for your birthday? And, of course, I said, that sounds great, but what is a Total Gym? Never heard of it before. So anyway, make a longer story shorter. So I bought it and I'm 195 pounds. And in three months, one of the wheels broke split in half. So I thought I'll just call up the, the, the owner's manual said two year warranty. So I called them up and they explained that because I didn't buy it on the infomercial, I wasn't covered by the warranty. So I then said, well, I'd like to buy the wheels from you. And they said, no. And it was, turns out, I found out a couple of years later, it's because the infomercial version has a different wheel than the one that I got. But I'm not sure they knew it, or I don't know. But anyway, uh, I believe the Lord helped me. I'm a mechanical engineer, but not an entrepreneur. And so this idea came, well, Randy, you're a mechanical engineer. If you can't design a better wheel, get it made at a local machine shop, maybe you should be working night shift at a convenience store. Well, that, that scares me. I got sleeping problems, you know. So anyway, I designed it. I used all the machine shops. I was down in Florida at that time in my regular job. So I, I picked one of them and had them make a few wheels. And then I put them on my machine and it worked so well. Then another thought came to me and I don't think it came from me. Hey, I wonder if anybody else needs those wheels. So I did a little search on the internet and found that there were other people that needed them. Same problems I had, they broke. So I had the machine shop make a hundred wheels and I had to, one of my daughters make a little website and that started on May 5th of 2003. And since then I make all of the wheels for there's seven different kinds of wheels for the different models. I make the two kinds of cables, foot harnesses, leg pulley upgrade, what else? Oh, the handles, which I sent yep. you one of. Yeah. Or yes. a pair. Um, and you know, it's, I've got the website has all that stuff in it now. And I know, uh, I think I know the answer this already, but all, all your products kind of made uh, in house in the USA and yeah, um, now that, that's an interesting question because I make, uh, as a matter of fact, I made a list of what do I make? What do I machine <laughs> and what do I buy? Okay. Nice. Wow. I make, of, course, of course I make all the wheels. I make the eyelets or cable stops for the cables. I make all the bushings or spacers. Uh, I make the stainless steel uh, frame handles, you know, the handle frames. Um, I'm, I make an engineering plastic mandrel for, what, for the grip. It ends up with a premium vinyl grip on the outside, but that, that inside there, I make that wow. I'm, and I make the hinge bushings. But I buy the materials to make them, acetyl uh -huh. engineering plastic and polycarbonate, O1 tool steel, for the axle bolts, 304 stainless steel rod stock for the handle frames and the spacers and bushings, and 316 stainless steel for the eyelets and cable stops that go on the, on the cables. So what components do I buy? I buy the hitch pins, and they're made in the US. I buy the rope pulleys for my leg pulley upgrade. Uh, I buy 719 nylon coated cable for my cables, which is much better than the stuff from China. And I'd buy nylon rope for my leg pulley accessory. Now the bearings are imported. Okay. But now I, I've used in what I've shipped, the 400,000 plus wheels that I've shipped have over 750,000 bearings. And in the 19 years I've been doing this, none of them have ever worn out. They're very high quality bearings, but they're imported. And I've had people look at the picture on the website and it says China. And, they, and then they make a big complaint. You say these are made in China. Well, the bearings are, the wheels are made in my shop. Okay, uh, the stainless steel nuts washers and handle quick links and D-rings for the foot harness. I buy, the, you know, I, I buy them from US vendors, the premium vinyl grips that you've got on your handle pair. Yeah. I buy them 
and the zinc coated chain and quick links that go on my Y attachment replacement for D ring for the leg pulley accessories. I buy those. Okay. Well, so, uh, great. It was a great extensive answer. Yeah. <laughs> and well, you, you've been doing this a long time and you know, not, I mean, a lot of knowledge from working on these different machines and different wheels and parts. So at this time, I know you've been making wheels for all different types of machines and told you makes all different types of models at this point. What, what parts can you, I guess, source and kind of help, replace and any kind of not just a total gym but other kind of like sliding bench training models that are out there well uh for one thing you know there's total gym they were the first and then there's all the knockoffs voigt gym weeder gym euro gym um two two kinds of omni gyms great total flex. Gym, I mean, yeah well i think that they might be licensed by total gym they're so similar i'm not oh, sure yeah. some of those details I, I can't figure out okay but the total gym is better than those other ones. Mm -hmm. When I look at the design that I need to do for the wheels, you know, they're, they're not, it's not the same thing at all. But you essentially can replace almost pretty much almost any modern machine that's out there. If someone went to your no, website. No. no, I wouldn't say okay. that. I mean, there are, there are thousands of machines, okay. but the ones that are on my website, if you, if you go to uh, the homepage uh, or if you click on start here, you'll see the list. Yeah. And it's the ones I mentioned and the I bigger think, fit. I didn't mention that, but. And it's a lot of popular models. I mean, even coming back to like, I mean, the total gym 1000 or models that have been around a while that some people might think, well, the wheels are out they're They're broken. The cable's broken or something like that. I'm going to throw it away. If you go to your website, we, you can essentially kind of save that machine. Exactly. Yeah. And make it better than it was when it was new. And that's what I want to get into wheel. now. Yes. Which is what makes your wheels and your products so different? I guess that's the multi, that's the million dollar question. Cause I know your wheels are <laughs> awesome. I got a chance to play with them. And I'll talk about in the front end, but what makes your million so dollar great? question? Yeah. What happened <laughs> to 64,000? 64, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. The original wheels are injection molded over an injection molded insert with just mold compound, not that strong. And the two layers cannot bond. Now, the reason that they, that they over mold like that, I believe is for tolerancing because mold compound shrinks or grows depending on how much entrained moisture or air is entrained in the mold compound. So you've got a, you've got a wheel that's, for most people, it, it'll work fine. But if you use it a lot or if you're heavy, then they can break, okay? So my wheels, I machine from solid engineering plastic. Here's... Here's the stuff that I, you know, this is what it starts out like rod stock. This is polycarbonate for my uh, polycarbonate wheels. This is an acetal. One of the trade names is Delrin. Excellent, strong, stable materials. And, it, and it's solid. So there aren't two layers that move with respect to each other. And out of the 400,000 plus wheels I've shipped so far in the last 19 years, not even one has ever broken. Wow. Now that's, that said, I have had some uh, problem reports, maybe 30 or 40 over the 19 years that was the result of unusual accidental abuse. And by unusual, I mean, things that you and I wouldn't think of just using the total gym. And I didn't think of it. I mean, it was, using my total gym, I didn't think of it. It wasn't until I started getting the phone calls and then I had to figure it out to make sure there wasn't something wrong with my wheels. And as it turns out, there are just some things that you should not do and some things that you should do to make my wheels last about forever and make original wheels last a lot longer. Well, I'm sure I'll put your wheels to the test because I do a lot of unusual things. So <laughs> I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure we'll put them to the test so far. I mean, they're great. Uh, what what that's leads into the next question. What are some of those important safety concerns and just things, not just upholding the integrity of the original wheels, but just overall things throughout the years you've learned about these products you think really is just important things to kind of know about? Well, in that in the recommendations that I supply in all the invoices to help avoid the accidental abuse, there is a safety one, but I'll just go through them one at a time. The first thing says that if you ever fold or unfold your total gym, first take the glide board off. Now, that may sound like an arduous task, but it isn't. Once you get used to doing it, it takes about 10 seconds. And the reason to do that is that the way Total Gym designed the system, if you fold or unfold with the glide board on, you risk pinching one of your upper wheels at the pivot point between the upper and lower rails. 
And that, co that converts your total gym frame into a giant nutcracker. And the nuts are the upper wheels. And it'll break an original wheel because of the way they're made. It does, it's never broken mine, but it does put a dent in the wheel. And once the dent is in there, then it's thump, 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 you know, as you're going up and down. So that's the first thing. And then the next thing I tell you is how to take the glide board off without folding it. Because the instructions in the owner's manual tell, doesn't tell you to take the glide board off. So it's three simple steps. Number one, raise the glide board to a steep angle. You can put it up at the top, but it doesn't have to be all the way up at the top. That's number one, easy. Number two, disconnect the pulley from the glide board. You know, underneath the top, just take it off. And that's so that you can take the glide board wherever you want when, you're, when you get it off. The third step is you slide the glide board up to the top of the rails, lift the upper wheels off, continue in that direction until the lower wheels are no longer on the lower rails. And what I call the capture bracket is no longer adjacent to the lower rails. And then you can take it wherever you want. And then when you fold it or unfold it, it's much easier. It's lighter weight. It doesn't rattle around. Another benefit is you can see your fingers. Back in yeah. 2003, I got my finger stuck in when I was folding it one time. My finger was like a quarter of an inch thick. <laughs> well, it's not, I, I literally just did that the other day. As often as I fold these things up, I mean, I, I pinched it again. I'm sure everybody that's watching this has had that close call at least once or twice. Yeah, it hurts like crazy. I was. So back on that same question, you're saying, so even the newer models, I was trying to look at that recently. So after you, because you told me before, you're saying that if it's all the way at the bottom, there's still a risk of that wheel pinching, or is it only if the the board's up a little bit and then when you fold it, it's a risk? Or you're saying just to get rid well, of the I mean, risk, may, take rid of it. There may be differences in, in the different models. I just say do it to all of them. And the, and the reason being, it makes it easier also. And it, and it protects your fingers because you can see the impending doom about to happen to them. Yeah. But it, it could be. I mean, if you look at it when you're doing it, if the wheels are not near that pivot point, you'd be safe. Okay. But I haven't seen it. I mean, my, my total gyms, uh, we, we take them off. Okay. You know, take the glide. And, and it, once you get used to doing it, it takes 10 seconds to get the glide board off. Okay. Just those three quick steps. So you make the uh, wheels, just so everyone's clear, you have wheel replacements. You have um, that chrome handle. I, I have it. Maybe I'll feature it in this video too already, but you have a great, great chrome handle there. That's a little bit different. You can maybe comment on that. What the design is different than Total Gyms? Yeah, yeah. The the Total Gym has two bends in it. Mine just has one bend in it, and it's not chrome. It's stainless steel. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, that mandrel I told you about the parts is is right in here, and this is the premium vinyl grip. Do you like your do the grip? Oh yeah, I love it. Your... Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Great. Most people do it. So this is a little longer, and it's not a you know it, it's a premium vinyl. Gives you a really good grip. Okay. Uh, and that's the quick link. It's a stainless steel quick link. Uh, the reason I really made these was because of people that had their plastic frame handles break. They didn't have a, they didn't have a path to get another one, at least from my website. So I designed to make these and I like them better. I mean, you can see if you're exercising, you're not as likely to hit yourself. Yeah. And of course I, I did that by selecting the angle that I bend it to. Okay. And then you also have uh, replacement cables that are also yes. very good quality. I wanted you to kind of touch on that. And before yeah. I even do that, I mean, you brought up another safety concern just about what to look for with cables snapping and fraying that I honestly wouldn't oh, know much about. Because right. I would that's have thought right. if my cable is going to break, I'm going to see it coming long before it happens. But you were telling me, you know, if it, you can see some fraying in the coating, but otherwise it'll just snap on you. So just the safety good. in the cables and then what good makes point. your cable yeah. so good. I got halfway through that list of recommendations and then stopped. <laughs> no, so the, the, let me just continue in that line. The next thing, the next recommendation after telling you how to take the glide board off safely without damaging your wheels is how to make sure your rails are nice and hyper smooth. Because if your rails are rough, like have rust on them or a paint bumps even or a burr, then every time the wheel rolls over it, it's going to put a dent in the wheel because it's going to have all the weight on that tiny little area. Huh. And so, uh, and it's a simple process. If you have, if it's a painted surface, 
then you just, while the glide board's off, you run your fingers up and down all four rails, feeling for any rough spots, and particularly anything sticking up in the path of the, of the wheels. If you have a little chip out of it, the wheel should roll over that with no problem. It's, it's the little thing that sticks up that would be a problem. And if you find any, then we recommend that you gently address just those spots with some progressively finer sandpaper, not steel wool, not scotch bright, but sandpaper because it's flat and it holds its sign. Because all you want to do is just bring that whatever sticking up, paint, rust, paint bump, uh, any or burr, you just want to bring it down to flush so that when the wheel rolls, it's a unified pressure on the wheel. Okay. And with that going on, you know, I don't see how these wheels will ever wear out. Okay. You know, just one, one example of that. Um, I put some wheels on a commercial total gym in the, for the physical therapist that's close by here. Like 10 years ago, I put them on. And after church one day, my wife sent me to the grocery store and I ran into him. And he said, you know, I think those wheels are wearing out because it's a rough ride. And so uh, I went, that was Sunday. Monday, I went in and looked at him. We took the glide board off. The wheels still looked new. So I had him get on there and, and they're doing plyometrics or something with three or 400 pounders. I had him get on and show me what they did and they're jumping off of it. And this, this is an older machine, you know, from the eighties and, and the, the roughness he heard was the, was the vibration in his rail system, but the wheels, because they're such a great uh, chrome plating on those commercial, older commercial uh, total gyms, there's nothing to, to wear them. They just roll on it. Now, the last thing which you were alluding to uh, is a, on the recommendations is a, the recommendation that you only put your squat stand for the models that have a squat stand. You only put it in when you're going to do squats, okay, because it's perfectly safe. If you got your feet on there and you're just doing squats, it's perfectly safe. But take it off otherwise. Quick question about that, though. I had somebody tell me in a, in a comment, that I don't know if it's possible, that they said that the the bottom where it sits in the metal could broke off one time. I don't, you ever heard anything like that? The yeah. bottom circle, like it just yep. kind of snapped yeah, off. There, there's, there's a couple of short pieces of, of pipe that are welded onto that, the horizontal larger pipe that contacts the floor. And yes, I've heard of cases where that, I mean, for a heavier person doing it, that can happen. And what I always recommend is take it to a welder, a local welder, and he'll weld it up stronger than it was when it was new. That's what I recommend. Okay. But the reason to take it out when you're just using your handles and cable is because if the cable snaps, as you're probably aware, there are no brakes on that glide board. And down she'll go as soon as the cable snaps. And one guy in Jacksonville broke two of his toes when his cable snapped. He had bare feet, broke two toes because he hit the squat stand with his feet. If the squat stand hadn't been there, he would have more gradually just rolled out onto the floor and probably not hurt himself. A week later, I got a call from a guy in Alabama who had the same problem. He always left his squat stand in, but he was upside down on his glide board. And he told me he almost broke his neck. And as it was, he probably did disc damage because of the pain he was in. Hmm. So wow. that's the reason to take the glide board off if you're not using it. Good point. And then the cables. There's just oh, the yes, I'm checking cables. the yeah. I forgot to bring the cables over oh, here okay. with me. It's, it's in the other building. But uh, the cables, there are two cables that fit all of the total gyms. And there are a couple of reasons why mine are a lot better. I've, I've now shipped over 35,000 cables. And as a matter of fact, Chris is going to get the cable for metal handles right now. Okay. He makes them in this building these days. Oh. But uh, anyway. Uh, the original cables are 7-7 seven, seven cable, which means seven bundles of seven wires, and, and it's eighth-inch cable. Well, that size of wire, thank you, that size of wire is not very metal fatigue resistant, bending back and forth, back and forth around the pulley shiv, which is the pulley wheel. And so, and then it's coated in cheap vinyl. And so it's, that turns out to be a good thing in a way, because... Out of the thousands, literally thousands of people I've talked to over the years that had their cable break, all but one said that before it broke, the plastic coating was all cracked up. 
So that's a good warning sign. And some of those people that had it cracked up, they were smart. They looked at it and they saw that they could see now through and see the wires and they could see that some of the wires were broken. Now, when the cable snaps, the metal fatigue failure is a sudden snap. You don't have time to do anything if it snaps. So if I, mean, I recommend if the cable coating is cracked up, stop using it, get a better cable. Now, my cable is 719 instead of 77. So the wires are much smaller in diameter and therefore much more metal fatigue resistant. And out of the over 35,000 that I've shipped already, uh, only eight of them have ever broken that I've heard of, only eight. Whereas all the original ones either broke or were close to break. So uh, also mine are coated with much tougher nylon and I make the eyelets. I don't know if you can see the eyelets here. You've got one now. Yeah. So yeah. the eyelet I make right here in the shop out of 316 stainless steel. And for the older plastic frame handles where the cable disappears into the handle, it's disappearing into a... Um, tapered clamshell plug mm -hmm. then i make a hex shaped stop which goes in there they both all this stuff comes with instructions on how to install mm -hmm. I'll and, show oh, some... and also the, the length i'm sorry one other thing my cable is 96 inches long and all of the total gym cables range from 90 to 102 wow. i picked the, the middle number so i'd be close to everybody but because of the compound pulley arrangement, you've got three pulleys, you've got four lengths of cable leading to the glide board, two of them to the handles and two of them to the pulley that's connected to the glide board. And therefore, any difference in length, the maximum difference is six inches in cable length, is divided by four to calculate the difference in glide board position. So the maximum difference in where your glide board is with this cable uh, is an inch and a half, a quarter of six inches. And since all of the total gyms have extra uh, travel on the rails, it hasn't been an issue for anybody. So Randy, who do you think would be a good target? I mean, obviously if someone needs to replace a total gym or some parts, an old model, that would definitely seek out your website. But do you think someone who just, say they just got a new total gym, how many, I know you don't really know, but how many years do you think a typical user might have on the wheels or the cables? Uh, maybe before, or maybe you think it's beneficial, which I think it's a good idea since those are such good quality products, just to kind of go right to your website, and order some new stuff. When do you think, is there a range you think you find people call you? Well, it's kind of, it's interesting, an interesting question because the most frequent that I've taught that of any person that I had talked to customers, one guy had a 1700 that he bought in, uh, what was it? May. And he talked to me in December, he'd already changed his original wheels three times. Wow. When he, and when he got my wheels, that's the end of it. But that's unusual. I mean, he must've been a very hard user or very heavy or something. Um, typically, a lot of people have them last two years, but then depending on how much they use them, and I'm sure you know, a lot of people don't use them very regularly. They store them for seven years and then get serious about it around you know, the 1st of January with their new year's resolution. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, that's a wide range of how long they last. I, since I ship fast, I mean, if I get an order before the, the mailman comes, I ship that day and it usually takes three days anywhere in the U S. Okay. So unless you have a machine that has to run every day, you might just wait till they break. Um, you know, of course, it'd be nice if they just would buy 10 sets of wheels as soon as they buy it, as they get their new machine, but that's not practical. And that's not, I mean, that uh, I wouldn't really recommend that. That's just funny. Okay. And as far as the, the cables go, some of them last two years and some of them last 10 years, the original ones. But I think it has to do with how much they use it. Now, here's an interesting thing. You, you might think that cable, theirs and mine, the tensile strength is about 2,000 pounds. But because of that compound uh, pulley arrangement, the actual load on the cable is rarely over 30 pounds because you got the weight of the person reduced by the angle that the glide board is at. You know, then you can figure that easily with trigonometry. But then in addition, whatever it is, divide it by four because there's four wheels and then divide it by four again because of the four lengths of cable leading to it. So, you know, it'd be unusual to have more than say 30 or 40 pounds 
of force on that cable. Have you noticed yeah. any difference in the newer model with the Fitna XLS uh, versus the older stuff that you saw, like maybe the 90s or 90 made models? Um, no, no. Oh, the, okay. the, you know, the large frame total gym, which is the 2000, 3000, 3000 XL, the XL and the XLS, uh, they all have the same frame. And okay. any one of them can take my XL conversion kit because it's the same brackets and everything. You know, it's just really the cushioning and it has the, the, like the XLS has a higher quality pulley on it. There's some details like that. Uh, and the old small frame total gyms, which there's a long list of, you know, the 1,500, 1,700 EX Pro, Super Ultra Platinum Max, and, uh, you know, a lot more, they all take the same wheel. Okay. It's, it's the 1.032 inch wide wheel. And it's just in, in recent years, like the last maybe three or four years at the most, they came out with a new wheel assembly, which you can see on the website. If you go to small frame total gym, click get parts, you'll see the two of them and a picture of their wheel assembly. So you can identify which wheel you need for the small frame. Okay. Uh, but, but they're, they're more and more of those, and it, the, the smaller one, the newer one is 0.955 inches wide instead of 1.032. Well, I'm sure you heard a lot of stories throughout the years of uh, different horror stories in the total gym. Any uh, kind of more humorous stories you've heard? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Now, just the common thing for people to do when their wheel breaks is to try and glue it back together again with super <laughs> glue or epoxy. And, and of course, that, that doesn't work. There's too much stress on those wheels for that. And uh, so that's why, and that's, so they call me, you know, but another one early on, probably 2005, I had one customer must've had a good sense of humor because he wrote me after he got his new wheels on. And I wish I still had that email, but he actually spelled out what it sounded and felt like. And it was <laughs> bad wheel, bumpity, 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 bump. I mean, he spelled it out <laughs> across the whole line, you know, it just tickled me. I, I haven't even forgotten it, but probably the most unusual thing is one guy installed his new wheels with the glide board on the total gym. Can you imagine that no. climbing underneath and doing that? It, it no. reminds, it just reminds me of the proctologist that rebuilt his car engine, <laughs> assembled it through the exhaust system. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, those are, those are good ones. Um, I guess any other final words just before we wrap up, I really appreciate your time. You spent with me here and also um, off the uh, camera, a couple of conversations, many conversations, well, a couple of conversations we had. So um, anything else you want to add? No, can't, I can't think of anything. Okay. Thank Otherwise you you're, you you're easy to get a hold of. I know that they call you at the shop number. It's usually that usually you who picks up or. Yeah. It's usually yeah. me that picks up because okay. I'm here. Ridiculous hours. Okay. Yeah. And you got, I mean, the website is pretty self-explanatory. It's really user-friendly. And I do know when you sent the kits out, I'll show the camera a bit too. When you send out really good instructions and everything's pretty much really there, easy to go. So uh, unless you're kind of um, an idiot like me that can actually make mistakes on a really simplistic <laughs> instructions, most people won't have a problem. So relatively dummy proof. Um, <laughs> Don't I feel alone. I've gotten calls from people that needed some help. Okay. Put them on backwards and not yeah. good. Yeah. All right, Randy, I really appreciate everything. Appreciate the time. Much success to you. Hopefully people go check out your website and this works out for you. Well, thank you, Mike. It's been a, it's been a pleasure. All right. Thanks a lot, Randy.